Hello and welcome to today's webinar about deploying your existing applications on the cloud. This webinar will be presented by GigaSpace's Deputy CTO, Shai Hasidim. We're planning a 40-minute presentation followed by a Q&A session, so please feel free to ask your questions through the chat or questions features of this webinar platform, and we'll be happy to address those at the end of the presentation. At this point, I'd like to hand this to Shai, and I wish you an interesting and very useful webinar. Hello, everybody. My name is Shai Hasidim. I'm a um, deputy, I'm the Gigaspace deputy CTO located in New York. And we're going to spend uh, the next uh, 40 minutes uh, learning how you can deploy your existing web application on the cloud. So what are these uh, webinar goals? The webinar goals are in to show you that there is, in fact, zero changes needed to deploy an existing pure web application on the cloud when using the Gigaspaces cloud framework. And we'll see that if uh, you've already got your uh, web application being deployed uh, locally using whatever tools that you're basically using, your favorite tools, you can take these and deploy these on the cloud with zero changes. There's no need to have any special configuration built into your web application. There's no need to change the code whatsoever. The uh, second goal for this webinar is to show you how you can scale the web application once it is running on the cloud. We'll show you how you can do manual scaling and future webinars, in fact, in the next one that we'll have uh, in a few weeks, we'll show you how you can auto-scale how we can dynamically scale uh, running a web application while it is running on the cloud. Most of the activities which we are be describing over here are in fact part of our documentation. You'll be able to run these yourself and, in, and basically you'll see all these steps, so most of the steps that we'll be describing over here listed on this page. You also will also have all these slides available um, uh, after this session. So what are the basic steps that you need to perform in order to deploy your web application on the cloud? In fact, there are three main steps. The first one is to install the application. Installing means just copying files or uploading the files into the cloud application repository. The cloud application rep repository in our case, since we're using the EC2, the Elastic Cloud, uh, the Amazon Elastic Cloud, is essentially S3, which is the uh, uh, file kind of system, or uh, uh, cl the cloud file system, which you can place files on and will basically use a simple tool that allows you to place files on the cloud. The next step would be to deploy and uh, you deploy through application deployment configuration, which will show you how to construct. And once you deploy the application, you'll be able to manage it. And uh, deployment and management basically done through a simple uh, web tool that we are, we are providing, and in fact are also available through a command line tool. With this session, we'll show you how to use the web cloud tool. When a machine is provisioned and started, or a virtual machine started on the cloud, um, there are a few steps that are going on behind the scenes. Um, you don't necessarily need to be familiar with all this, but for the sake of for whoever is just curious to understand what's going on, we'll describe a bit what's going on once a new machine is started. Essentially, the first step is, the, is to pass the uh, deployment descriptor. It's a simple XML file, which we'll show you uh, later on. And um, uh, um, provisioner manager, or what we call a deployment uh, uh, manager, actually starts a new machine, virtual machine, on the cloud, install the relevant software packages, and assign 
to this started machine are, are role. Um, the different roles are in fact specified as part of the uh, deployment configuration file, and there are four types of machines that you guys can that you guys can start. One is a HTTP load balancer. It's basically running um, uh, the Apache HTTPD load balancer, fully tuned and configured. The second one is a database machine. By default, it comes with my SQL database. A third one is the machine which actually runs the application. In our case, is the one that will actually host the web application. And another machine which is called the GSM, which is managing the internal deployment of the application on the cloud. Especially this type of process is repeated for all the virtual machines which are started. Once you've got all these machines fully running, you'll be able to ma monitor and manage the application. So how a uh, general application would look like? Um, this is, in fact, more like a web application uh, setup. We will have some sort of a web load, load balancer. You could ha have, in fact, multiple load balancer. These load, ba load balancer can be mapped through a DNS in, uh, into your website. Any access to the load balancer will be routed to one or more uh, web server, which will be running within the Gigaspaces containers. Um, and these could access the in-memory data grid, which is also provided with Gigaspaces, or access the database. In many cases, the actual access to the database or the data persistence is done through a mirror service, which is basically provided the ability to have asynchronous persistency. So you can scale the data access activities through our in-memory data grid. Um, which uh, asynchronously proceeds the data, and you can scale the web tier by starting new web server instances, whether manually or dynamically. You can also have other types of machines that will run whatever you guys would like, for example, a Tomcat server or compute node or JMeter, whenever you like to run benchmarks on the cloud. This is, in fact, another uh, webinar that will uh, conduct uh, in the future that will show you how you can run POCs and benchmarks on the cloud. Our simple application would involve uh, several components. The first one would be obviously a client, a browser, simple browser, that will access a load balancer running on the cloud. And this load balancer will be accessing uh, the web server which will be hosted within Gigaspaces container. And we'll start with a single one, and later on, we'll start another one. We'll have also have the GSM machine running on the cloud, and this will actually manage the different Gigaspaces containers. So that's basically our web application architecture. So these are the steps that we're going to uh, go through with our webinar today. So the first step is, in fact, creating the Amazon uh, AWS account. So let's move into the, our browser. And we'll access the uh, Amazon AWS uh, website. That's the address and we'll create an account. In our case, we already ha have an account, so I'll just show you how this account uh, is already being constructed. So with our account, we'll see that we've got our access identifiers already been set up. This is where, how you get your keys, okay? And basically the other things which you also need to set up is the security groups. Accessing the security groups done through 
the AWS Management Console. Make sure that you sign up for Amazon EC2. You can do that from here. Okay. Once you've got this set up, you can access the console. <coughs> The security group panel is accessible through the security group link. Once you've got this clicked, you should click the security groups and you'll need to add, if you don't have these settings, you need to add these three ports, 22, 443, and 80, to be available with your default security groups. With your, without these, the uh, Gigaspaces Cloud Tools uh, would not be able to, to, to connect to your machine. Okay, so that's basically the uh, first step. So the next step would be to create the application repository. The application repository is basically a location on the cloud where you should place your application files. So in our case, I've got a very, very simple web application, our file, which includes very, very basic files. The first one is the hello GSP. I'll just show you this very simple file just includes uh, the information about the container which actually hosts the file and it also includes the session information. Very, very simple uh, JSP file. Other than, other than that, it also includes the relevant uh, uh, WebXML, nothing special. Very, very simple, pure web application WAR file. So how can we install this WAR file on the cloud? Simple way to do that is to use a tool called S3 Firefox Organizer. That's basically the tool it's provide it is a plugin provided with Firefox. In order to install it, all what you need to do is just Google it, S3 Organizer. <clears throat> That's the website which you should access and just add to Firefox, click on the add to Firefox and you'll be able to, and this will install it uh, with your Firefox browser. There are other tools which you can use uh, which are not a, a Firefox uh, plugin, um, just Google uh, and you'll find a few of these. There's, also, there's obviously also command line tools. So with our uh, um, case, we've got the uh, account already set up. So we've got here our account. You do that by simply creating a new account and have your Amazon access and secret key available over here. Okay, let's so how you uh, place your file on the cloud, you just create here a new folder. Let's just create a new folder. Let's call it My Cloud App Repository. Click OK. A new folder will be created. We'll access the folder. We'll click the WAR file over here. That's basically this left side is my local machine upload the file, and it is on the cloud. Very simple step. Basically, you should do that for every uh, application file or, or any other supporting file which you like to use as part of your application running on the cloud. So that's, this was, this is how you basically created the application repository and placed the files on the cloud. So, what, are the, what is the next step? Third step is to create the 
Cloud Deployment Descriptor. The easiest way to create the Cloud Deployment Descriptor or the Cloud Application Deployment Descriptor is to use ready-made uh, files or examples located on the Gigaspaces documentation website. Uh, to access the Gigaspaces uh, documentation, just go into gigaspaces.com slash wiki. I'll show you this. And once you've accessed the Gigaspaces uh, uh, wiki website, there is a cloud, cloud link at the top, okay? Clicking this guy will take you to the Gigaspaces cloud computing framework documentation which includes, in fact, all the information which you need. Um, one of the pages over here is the one which I've already uh, described, is the one which we are actually uh, going through, and most of the steps that we're uh, doing over here together are listed over here. The second step is basically the step which shows you how to create the web application deployment descriptor. So we'll simply just copy and paste this into our editor, and we'll just modify it a bit to include the stuff which we want to have. So the first thing that we need to do is to name our application. So this will be, let's call it my plain web app, my first web app, okay, and um, you can leave the key name as is. The next one, the alternate S3 source there, is the location of the application files on the cloud. In our case, it is my cloud app prep. That's basically what you need to use. This is the Gigaspaces version that will be used. We can leave it, you can leave the default as is. And we've got here the machines section, which actually we've got uh, the piece that in, instruct the deployment descriptor or instruct the deployment manager to start the different machines. So we'll go over this very quickly. The first one is the GSM machine. The GSM machine is the one which actually managing the application locally, so we can name it. This is the name. We leave the default name as is. And we can also specify the different AMI that we'd like to use. This is a small AMI. And here we should place the location of the um, deployment of, of the application file that we like to deploy. Okay, this is our WAR file. We also have got the GSCs machine over here listed. By default, we'll start only a single one. This is the uh, AMI ID and the type. And we'll also have a load balancer, which will be basically routing incoming HTTP requests to the different web servers that we are running within Gigaspaces containers. In our case, we'll have only a single one. We can all, uh, obviously have multiple of these and have some sort of uh, failover between these. This is basically um, uh, an example which we'll demonstrate in future webinars, how you can actually um, provide availability for the load balancing tier of your web application. Very, very powerful capability, again, provided here out of the box. Please note that Gigaspaces hosts both, uh, both several web uh, servers. By default, we're providing uh, the support for Glassfish, and there's also support for Jetty. So let's save this file on our machine. I'll just pick a folder. So 
I'll just call it uh, my cloud uh, deploy dot XML. Okay, make sure that it's an XML file. And that's it. That's basically would be our cloud deployment descriptor. So what will be our next step? Let's see. So once we've got the cloud de deployment descriptor, the next step would be to access the web cloud co console. So how we do that? So in order to access the cloud web console, all what you need to do is to go to Gigaspace's website and access the My Cloud page. The gigaspaces.com slash mycloud is essentially the uh, gate or the uh, central point to the Gigaspaces Cloud Console and for other cloud-related resources. There are a few options over here. The first option is basically allowing uh, you to test drive Gigaspaces, get a trial code uh, for one hour free drive and run, to run the Gigaspaces uh, uh, demo application. The other option is to register as a new user. That's basically what we'll be doing. And the third option, the third option is basically accessing the system once you're already fully registered. So we'll go the, the process as a new user. So you basically click the second option and click next. Once you click next, the second uh, step over here is to fill in your information. Very, very simple step. Provide your email. And once you went through this process, you will be getting an email with the Gigaspaces um, cloud license file. So I already went through this process and uh, I've got an email with, this, uh, with the uh, cloud uh, license file. And all what you need to do once you've got the uh, email with the license file is to access as a returning user. Okay. So I already got my uh, cloud uh, Gigaspaces Cloud license file and the uh, AWS keys placed, and I've already logged in into the Cloud Console. So that's basically the Cloud Console. So let's go through the different portions of this uh, simple uh, web application. The right side includes uh, three options or three buttons which allows you to run ready-made applications uh, that uh, are built in, into the cloud uh, web console. There are three options over here. The first one is a trader uh, stock desktop. It includes the example how you can scale your web application dynamically. Very, very cool demo. Includes Ajax and a few other uh, interesting pieces. Um, which I highly recommend you guys to play with. The next uh, option is to run a simple data grid. And the third option is the pet clinic uh, application. Whoever is familiar with the pet clinic, this is a, a modified version, which is using Gigaspaces on the cloud. And basically, the data is stored within in memory data grid and asynchronously persists into MySQL database. All these running on the cloud. If you guys would like to uh, go through a quick tour uh, how to run all these, you can simply access the Gigaspaces cloud documentation and go into the main page. And you'll see over there that you've got a quick tour section which actually shows you how to run all these simple demo applications. So please do spend time and go through this quick tour. Very, very simple and very easy way to learn how, what you can do 
with BB Spaces Cloud Tools when running your application on the cloud. So let's go back into our console. The left side includes the section which you can use to deploy your custom application. So in order to do that, you just need to load the deployment file. Let's access the folder where we've got our deployment descriptor. So this is, if I'm not wrong, this is the file, my cloud deploy. Okay. So the file has been loaded. And let's see what will be our next step. Okay. So the next step is simply to deploy the application. How we do that? Well, a click of a button, deploy. So that's basically deploying the uh, application on the cloud. What's going on right now is that we've got the deployment server starting few machines. Okay, it will be copying or downloading the file from this location on the S3 into the machine which is running the GSM. This machine will basically deploy the application into all the machines that's running the GSC. Okay? We actually see these here. We've got the GSC small, the GSM small, GSC small, and the load balancer. These are basically mapped to the names that we have listed over here. Okay? And obviously you can name these as you wish. So it's a very, very con convenient way to tag the different machine types that you are deploying or, or using with your application. Okay, and you can have different type of GSCs machine or different type of uh, database machine, and each one of them could have its own different properties. For example, different type of machines like small, large, extra large, or different uh, security settings. And we haven't gone all the security settings options, but you can construct pretty robust and secured environment once your application running on the cloud. So we already have got one of the machines actually being fully started, and we'll be waiting. It takes about a minute or two until all the machines will be running. While this is going on, I'll explain a bit the other portions of this web console. The deployment process output is a very convenient way to learn what's going on behind the scenes once the application is being deployed. And you can, in fact, uh, use this as a very good troubleshooting tool to see what's going on if there are any issues or any problems. So we already see here that uh, the files, there, were, there are some files that actually been transferred into these into the started machines. We already see that the second machine, the GC small, already been started, and we're waiting for the load balancer to be fully started. So that's one thing that you can use to see what's going on. The other uh, option to troubleshoot the started machines is to click this blue button over here. And in fact, you've got this blue button for each machine which essentially will start for you a new window which will basically show you the output of each machine. Right now it's not available, but in a few seconds, few minutes, it will be there. So we already have got these three machines available. The first thing that you can do is, in fact, ac access these machines through a cloud desktop. What is this cloud desktop? The cloud desktop is a, a simple remote access software which is running on each machine. You can access it by simply having the SQP URL for each machine using its public IP. By default, it will start a simple amp applet that would provide you access to the uh, remote desktop software. Once you'll have this window display, just click the continue button. 
it will actually download uh, the uh, software that al will allow your, your machine to access the cloud. Make sure that you'll get this confirmation box and click yes. In a few seconds, it will actually start a session that would, yeah, it's already going on. And that's basically a remote desktop or the desktop of a machine running on the cloud. As you can see, it's a Linux, Linux box, my machine running Windows. So I've act, I'm actually got a view here into a machine, virtual machine running on EC2, running uh, Linux. And we've got here the Gigaspaces console or the Gigaspaces a management environment running by default for you. So you don't actually need to have anything special done in order to monitor and manage the application once it's running on the cloud. So here, as you can see, we already have got the application being deployed. I'll kind of show you a bit what this tool is all about. Um, the first view over here basically shows you the different components that have been deployed. And we already have got our web application being deployed over here. The lower portion actually shows you the different machines which are uh, running. Right now we've got only a, a single machine running. In fact, we can start new machines whenever we want. You can do that simply by clicking the Add Machine and select the GSC Small, for example, in our case, and just start one more machine and click the Add Machine. Okay, so let's give it let's give it some time while this is going on. We'll uh, show you what what this uh, uh, tool which will run on the cloud is all about. And you've already seen that we already have got a new machine started. Once this will be fully running, we'll actually see this machine joining the cluster on the cloud. So we've got over here our web application running. And in order to access it, you can actually really do that from the UI over here by right click and open within browser. And we have over here the browser running on the cloud. This is not my machine. In a second, I'll show you how can access the same web application instance from my machine. So we actually see this running right now. That's the current time. That's the IP of the machine on the cloud. And that's the session ID which we've got for this browser. Okay. So this is running on the cloud. I'll access now the same application through my machine. So I'll go back again to my browser. How you do that from the uh, web from the web console? You simply click the running icon over here. Simple click, and voila! I've got exactly the same application accessed from my browser, my local machine. And in fact, over here, I actually see the full IP, the public IP for the machine running my web application. Very, very simple. As you can see, the uh, Gigaspaces tools are simply complement the Amazon tools. And you can actually have got uh, different views for these running instances. You've got the view of these running instances from the Gigaspaces cloud tools. Or you can actually view these from the Amazon uh, management console by clicking the instances icon, uh, instances link, and that's basically the one which allows you to access the, um, the machine. So the next step over here would be to show what's going on with the load balancer. So simple way to access the load balancer is to click the load balancer link over here and type balancer. 
This is the Apache console, and as you can see, it is running obviously on the cloud, and we've got right now only a single web application running, and we already got one kind of HTTP request routed to this web application. So if we want, for example, to scale our web application, all, one, all what we need to do is to increase the amount of web servers, and you'll see that the web, uh, that the uh, load balancer would be dynamically configured to route new requests to this newly started machine. So let's see how we can do that. So let's go back to our Gigaspaces management console. We already see that this newly started machine joined the Gigaspaces cluster, and we can simply click the plain web app example, which we already deployed, and click the increase button. Now, you'll see that it will take a few seconds, but once we've clicked this button, a new web application instance will be created. So we already see that being deployed over here. So instead of having a single instance of our web application running, we've got, in fact, right now, two of these. And you can do that while the application is running. So you could scale the application manually or dynamically. We'll show you how you can do that. And in fact, you could scale any component of your application while it is running on the cloud in a very, very simple manner. And in fact, you can do that exactly by clicking the increase button. You can obviously also decrease it, OK? and scale down. So once we've got this in place, let's go back to our load balancer and refresh it. And we actually see that a new instance has been introduced and attached into this running load balancer. And all this while the system is running. Very, very simple. So if, for example, I'll have another browser accessing my web application, so let's just take this IP and start a new web browser. OK, that's a new web browser. And I'm accessing now exactly the same application using a new browser instance. OK? As you can see, it's a different session. OK? And let's go back to our load balancer. As you can see, before we had one over here. And let's refresh it. And yes, we've got new HTTP request being routed into the newly started machine, which is running the new web application. That's it. Very, very simple. Questions? Let's start with some, some questions. OK, so there's plenty of stuff going on here. So let's see. Um, so first of all, the, there's some, some, info, some question about um, uh, the load balancer and static IPs and security. So I'll go over these. So first of all, the, each machine which is running on the cloud can have a static IP associated with. You can do that simply by modifying the deployment descriptor and have the uh, elastic IP simply added over here. can show you how you can do that. 
if you go into the Gigaspaces documentation and go into the cloud application deployment descriptor configuration file and check the Elastic IP address documentation, you can actually see how you can assign an Elastic IP into a started machine. In many, many cases, it be uh, more relevant for the load balancer, so this is how you can do that. Once you've got this IP, static IP, you can have it registered into your, the DNS, and you're done. So you can actually have few of these, few of these load balancer machines uh, attached into the same Elastic IP. Only the first one will actually be using this one, and uh, if there will be some failure or some scheduled down, uh, shutdown time for this load balancer machine, the next one in line will be attached to this, uh, uh, to this IP. So you could actually have a failover for the load balancer. Okay? Now, in terms of security, there are plenty of security options. And in fact, uh, there is a very simple explanation uh, how you should uh, secure your application as part of the doc documentation. The link is here, securing the application, and there's a full exactly what needs to be done. Essentially, you could construct the architecture of your application running on the cloud in such a way that each one of them would have a different security group, which means that each tier could access the different, uh, uh, the, uh, different tier through a specific port and IP. So the application is fully secured, and in fact, the access to the um, machines on the cloud could be also secured through SSL. Okay. The database can be also be fully secured. Once a database is constructed on the cloud, you could apply the regular database uh, user and roles, so there's no issue over here. And in fact, also the, the in-memory data grid we've got similar security settings which you, which you can configure to make sure that only specific users will be able to access the data grid, and you can in fact have low, fine, low grain security settings allowing specific users accessing specific objects and performing specific activities when uh, connecting and uh, working against the in-memory data grid. Let's see, we've got a few more questions here. So the other question is uh, how you can uh, manipulate and, uh, the uh, files on the cloud. Um, the easiest way is to use S3 Firefox, as I've just showed you. So a, uh, this is a very convenient tool which you can use to uh, um, copy files or download files from the cloud into your application. In fact, there is another tool which I'm sometimes using called the Cloud Berry Explorer, which is in fact a bit better one which you can use. Next question, let's see what else. Guys, if you've got any questions, shoot. Let me let me give yeah, you some of see. some of the people's uh, okay. questions over here. Oh. So, one of the question was, uh, how does Gigaspaces cloud tools work with Amazon Elastic Box and potential new cloud management features coming from Amazon? So, the the Gigaspaces tools are basically complementary to the uh, Amazon tools. So you can use the Amazon uh, tools as is, uh, or you can use Gigaspaces together with these, with these tools. Um, on top of what Amazon are providing, as you can see, we're providing you the ability to deploy your application on the cloud and monitor these. And we also provide a remote desktop, as you've just seen, into these started machines. Uh, so you could have the same environment, you know, feel it kind of at home once you've got your application running on the cloud. Okay. Any more? 
Any yes, more questions? Yes, yes. We have we have quite quite a few more. Um, and then another question is: Is there is Gigaspaces Cloud Tool available as an ex Eclipse plugin, just like Amazon? Um, there are some plans to provide such. Uh, so right now, you can simply uh, wire your Eclipse into the Gigaspaces Cloud Tool uh, CLI. So we you can download Gigaspaces uh, Cloud Tools uh, command line which you can use whether with your Eclipse or with any scripts that you're constructing. So you can, in fact, use the Gigaspaces command line tool as part of your build process. So you can, in fact, um, build your application dynamically and deploy it on the cloud and run it on the cloud using the Gigaspaces command line tool. If you guys just want to take a look, the Gigaspaces command line tools are basically described over here. Okay, you've got here full documentation of the different uh, command line tools, and essentially you can uh, start a cloud, shut down a cloud, and so forth, and you can download the uh, Gigaspaces command line tools directly from this page. Okay. It's over here. Uh, another question. Uh, how can I do a capacity assessment for network throughput and compare it with web application stress, uh, stress levels? Yeah, very, very good question. Um, in fact, in many cases, it's very hard to do any capacity planning, but with Gigaspace, it's, it's in fact make it very, very easy. So this is what we call kind of the right scale. So in many cases, you can't actually uh, do any real planning if you've got any peak load. So if you've got peak loads, you need, you'll need to scale the application dynamically. And uh, we already showed you how you can scale it manually in the future. And the next webinar, I will show you how you can scale it dynamically. But if you already have got an instance of your application running, Gigaspaces provide you the different tools to monitor what's going on with your application. So with the web application, we're actually providing statistics for the different uh, activities conducted with the web container. And through these, you can actually perform any, um, uh, any uh, capacity planning. In addition, we also provide for each machine running on the cloud, and I'll show you this, how you can access it. You can simply go into each machine over here, IP, and click this link and it will take you into a module running on each machine called Ganglia. Ganglia is a distributed uh, statistics collection and monitoring tool which uh, can show you what's going on with each machine, CPU, memory, and network. And you can actually drill down into each one of these uh, machine statistics and see what's going on. So you can actually see here a very good example how you can provision these machines and monitor these and, and perform your capacity planning, both from the memory, network, CPU, and also the actual application behavior like the HTTP um, uh, request coming, coming, on, coming into the system, and also the in-memory data grid, which is uh, running on the cloud using the Gigaspaces tools. Next question. Okay, um, we have another question. Um, how do you uh, deploy an application with one or more integration touch points? Okay, so the, uh, in order to deploy several applications, all what you need to do is to have your deployment descriptor modified to include several applications, as you can see over here. So you can have here a second one and a third one. And in fact, within each one of these, you can instruct the system to have some sort of dependency within the different, uh, with the different applications. So um, using the Gigaspaces administration API, you can instruct each application to kind of scale or monitor other type of uh, services running on the cloud. Um, we, in fact, have got a very good example 
how you can uh, use Mule ESB um, with Giga Spaces and this application, this example, in fact, also available on our website. I'll show you how you can access it. And in fact, it's a very good example how you can uh, use um, and how you can integrate Gigaspaces with um, an external tool like um, ESB. You can simply go into Gigaspaces Wiki, go into the support and best practices, and access the Mule ESB. And that's, in fact, a very good example how you can uh, have a um, pretty sophisticated workflow type of application using Gigaspaces and show how you can do all the integration points with, uh, with this case, with Mule ESB. Next question. Okay. Uh, and we have many more. <laughs> so uh, oh. do we have an access to the logging file? Yes, 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 yes. I'll show you this right now. Uh, let's go back to the uh, Gigaspaces. Uh, in fact, you can do that from several uh, uh, locations. One is from the machine itself. Okay, so if you access the machine itself, you'll see that on each machine which are being started, you actually have got a log file over here. I'll show you the actual log file. It's at the home GS admin, and the log file is basically the server startup log txt. Okay, that's the actual log file generated on each machine for the deployment process, and you can actually access this log file directly from the web console. Let me show you how you can access it. Where is my console? Can we move to the next question? Yes, yes, yes. You All can. Right. You can. So there is another question. Uh, do you see a use case for your products to be used inside the enterprise on the internal cloud? And I will even add uh, to that question and ask: Do you have an enterprise deployment? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, we've got several uh, enterprise customers using Gigaspaces on the cloud. Uh, some of them are telecom, some of them are in the financial. In fact, in many, many cases, the uh, ability to secure the cloud once it is running on the cloud is a uh, um, is very important one. And um, we've got, as I already showed you, the ability to secure these machines, secure the data. And in fact, Amazon will be providing additional security settings, a um, very advanced one for the enterprise type of customers. Um, the ability to asynchronously persist data uh, is also very important for enterprise customers. Um, uh, with Gigaspaces and the ability to have the data uh, shipped into the database um, through this background process while the database is whether running on the cloud or outside the cloud is a very powerful one. And the ability to store only data in memory without actually touching the disk would be really very relevant for, uh, already relevant for uh, enterprise customers which cannot have data stored on disk um, but can have the data only in memory. And with Gigaspaces and the ability to use the unlimited resources of um, the virtual machines, you can store all your data in memory. And if you like also to persist it into the disk, you can actually persist it as a background process. And this will not uh, impact the application performance. This is how you can actually have the database outside of the transaction criti critical path. I think Next that, question, uh, please. just to make sure that we clarify the question, uh, the person who asked it wanted to know if uh, there is a use case or do we see a use case to, to use our product inside the enterprise on an internal cloud? Okay, absolutely. This is where Gigaspace is uh, used for the last almost decade. So the, the same exact uh, type of application which you can deploy in the cloud are obviously available and relevant for the internal cloud. With the internal cloud, um, uh, the Gigaspaces tool providing you the ability to 
start new machines or, or new gigaspaces containers to be accurate on the fly, and you can tie such uh, ability to any uh, enterprise uh, grid tool like uh, um, SunGrid engine, for example. We already have got such integration, and the SunGrid engine would allocate new machines and would uh, uh, allow GigaSys to start the containers over here and scale them dynamically any piece of the application. Is this, I guess that this is answering the question better yeah. way. I hope so. Uh, let's uh, have just one more question and we'll finish for the day. We have many, many more uh, questions and what we'll do is in the follow-up email that we'll send to all of you guys who have participated, we'll answer all your questions in writing so you'll have it uh, I just, uh, just want to respect people's time here. So the last question that we have here is, do you have a cloud management API just as Amazon so we can integrate it all into our own console? Yeah, the API which we're providing today is through the command line tools which I already showed you. So you can use these with any, any uh, API, whether it's Java, any scripts. So um, you can do whatever I've, I've done over here through the web console, you can do that through the command line tool. Don't also forget that we also have got the ability to manage the actual application while it is running through the admin API. If you guys would like to take a look on these, let me show you how you can access these. Very simple. Go to the Gigaspaces wiki. Go to the Gigaspaces Zap 7, type admin API, and you're done. And here you've got all the information how you can use the Gigaspaces API to manage the actual application while it is running. Very, very powerful API. Thank you very much to uh, Shai for presenting. And thank you all for joining. As I said, we will be sending you a follow-up email with responses to all the outstanding questions and with a link to the recording of this webinar. If anyone would want to have also the slide deck, we would be very happy to send it to you as well. Uh, we would really appreciate it if you could uh, fill in the very, very quick it's only five question survey that we have just to make sure that, we're, uh, that we ex exceeded or at least met your expectations uh, during this webinar. So thanks a lot and have a great rest of the day.